Here you see a time-lapse video of the Earth as the seasons progress. Notice how the snow and ice encroach across the Earth in the north during the winter months, then recede during the summer months. Also, notice how the Greenlands expand further south in the winter months, especially in the tropics. Then notice how they expand further north in the summer months. Looking at the changing months at this speed, it almost seems as if the Earth is breathing. Now, go to your local supermarket and you will see how the world today is so interconnected with food and products from all over the world. So, let's begin our look into how this food network was all made possible. So, in this video, we're going to take a closer look at agriculture and industrialization. And in doing so, we'll ask this essential question. How can we classify the various activities in the global economy? And now for something completely different. We're going to look at classifying economic activities, beginning with primary activities, also known as the extractive sector. You see, in any society, people are involved in different areas of the economy. And primary activities involve the extraction of natural resources, things such as herding, fishing, mining, farming, lumbering, so on. They're known as primary activities because that is what people were involved in for most of human history. And in the United States today, around 1% of all people are involved in primary activities. And so now let's move on to secondary economic activities, also known as the manufacturing sector. People involved in this kind of labor process raw materials from the primary sector and transform them into finished products. There's almost an infinite range of commodities ranging from the production of toys, chemicals, buildings, phones, shoes, etc. I mean, just look at the room around you. Go ahead, be my guest, look at the room around you. It is almost impossible to find something in that room that is not mass-produced or made by things that are mass-produced. And in the United States, more than 19% of all people are working in the manufacturing sector. And now we will move on to the service sector, which really involves more than just tertiary activities, but for now we'll focus on that. These are jobs where the people are engaged in services such as transportation, tourism, education. So if you're driving a truck or operating a cash register or waiting tables, those are all examples of tertiary economic activities. And in the United States, more than 80% of people are involved in the tertiary economic activities. In fact, so many people in the modern world are involved in these kinds of jobs that we actually divide it even further into, for example, quaternary economic activities. Now, these are jobs where you are concerned with collection, processing, and manipulation of information and capital. Basically, if you're dealing with data or dollars, you're in the quaternary sector. Classic examples are the FIRE jobs, F-I-R-E, for finance, insurance, and real estate. But you can also see some levels of administration, such as chief financial officers, or even legal services. And then there are the quinary jobs. Now these jobs usually involve high-level specialized knowledge or skills, such as scientific research or high-level management. And in general, going from primary to quinary, you do tend to see an increase of education at each level, and in some instances, an increase in income at each level. Unless, of course, the economy is not doing so well. 